Welcome to The Young and the Restless. I'm Zach. I'm Olivia. And I'm Victor. And this is the podcast that we thought would be funny, but is actually sad most of the time. Now I lay me down to sleep. I dreamt I had a soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, will that dream just go on for its own sake? So I had three different people tell me like a, um, like a, a prophetic dream this week. Three people, you know, had a prophetic dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, like how far apart were the, the, was the prophecy and the, the fulfillment? Well, each time, um, the next day, each time for all three of them. That's weird. Yeah. Can you give us a rundown? Yeah, so um, I will confirm with her that we're. It's good to share this, but uh, so one friend told me that she had a dream that she saw a little kid drop a ball, and she looked down at the ball, and it had two brown fetuses on it. And the next day, her dad told her that they they were doing IVF and that they lost two of their fetuses what's ivs ivf in vitro fertilization so they're trying trying to have a baby um so like she saw she saw a a kid drop two fetuses on the ground and the next day her dad said we lost two of our fetuses oh weird yeah and then my mom told me that she had a dream that there was an earthquake and then the next day this isn't necessarily a prophetic thing, but she she had a dream that there was an earthquake, and then the next day she got in the car and turned on NPR, and they were talking about how all the all of the bridges in Seattle are like seismically unsafe if there was an earthquake. Mm. Yeah, and and then another friend messaged me saying that he had a dream that I don't think that I think this is an old dream, but he told it to me yesterday. Um, he had a dream that his cousin was like a like a cancer patient and having chemo and that he saw her like wasting away, like in like a time lapse, like in the hospital. And then he called her the next day and she was in Costa Rica and had been like, uh, she had like a violent encounter with somebody who like dragged her by her hair or something. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, He had seen her hair falling out too. That was Mm. one thing he said. Um, But no cancer, no cancer, just, you know, uh, bad it, guys. Yeah, an attack's not good either. But no, not ideal. Yeah, that's that's a lot of um, uh, what's the word? It's like <laughs> the word that means like serendipity, but it, it has more yeah. of a woo connotation. You know what I mean? Um, synchronicity. S- there it is, synchronicity. Coinky dink. Coinky dink. Uh, what if it was a radioactive mugger, though, right? And they're just giving cancer to anybody mm. that they attack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought like you were going to super villain. Yeah. I thought the fetus one was especially spooky, though. The fetus one, yeah, is definitely the weirdest one. Yeah. Yeah, because the the others do seem like like you could chalk it up to co- to Quinky Dink. Uh, yeah, I'll the- believe your mom's psychic when we have an earthquake. Yeah, that's right. Do you, do you guys get earthquakes up there? Rarely. Yeah. So the whole thing about Seattle is since I was conscious, I've been hear- hearing about the big one and mm-hmm. we've been waiting and yeah, it could happen too. today. It could happen in a hundred years, but uh, essentially cool. it's going to fuck us all over and we are, our infrastructure is not at all built to It's supposed to it. cause a tidal wave, right? It's there's going to be a lot of flooding, yeah. Um, but they don't want to. They don't want to pay to fix some things. Mm-hmm. Seems to be the, the issue. Yeah, we're apparently having a heat wave here in Los Angeles. It just seems warm to me. I mean, it's it's been like ninety degrees for I don't know, like a week. I don't know, in Denver, it, it used to get like a hundred and nine, like frequently throughout mm-hmm. August. Um, but it was dry heat. But it just, I don't don't know. I guess in temperate places, people make a bigger deal out of like a a couple degrees. Um, 
because even that last summer in, that I spent in Seattle, when we had that like super brutal heat wave, mm-hmm. that like killed all those people. Because speaking of being unprepared, what is it like yeah. seven seven yeah. percent of homes in Seattle have AC? Yeah. Do you guys have yeah. AC after we that? We do actually. Yeah. We do have AC. That's good because that yeah. was I had to stay in a hotel. It was really bad. That. Yeah. We were still in our little apartment for that. Well, so there's there were two there was one where we were in our oh. little apartment and there yeah. was really bad wildfires yeah was that what the one you're talking about i'm talking about the it? the heat dome the, well, that was last summer right yeah 2021 yeah yeah that was when it didn't get below i don't think it went below below 90 even at night and that, that it was really hot that was the yeah, reason we were, it killed all those we people here. was because your body needs like to cool down at some point and and just yeah. wasn't happening for a lot of people yeah yeah. I think we're, we were in our house by the time that happened. It seems like Texas now is like having all these power grid problems, right? Where it's like in the summer, it's too hot for the power grid. And in the winter, it's too cold for the power grid. And it's just like yeah. constantly an issue. Yeah, it's funny how people show up at places and they're like in Seattle, they like the settlers, it was like, you know, gray and drizzly for 10 days in a row. And they're like, well, this is how it's going to be forever. So let's just throw up some bridges and not worry about earthquakes. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it seems to be getting increasingly warm in the summers. I think yeah. this is going to be like, like we're going to have climate refugees up here. The hotel that I stayed in during the heat dome, that, that was a pretty funny story though. Did I tell you guys about that? I don't remember. Mm-mm. Somehow the, the only uh, hotel that was available was like, downtown like near the water um it was like a super nice like what's what's the highest number of stars is it four for a hotel five three and a half it was the kind where you like you see a concierge first and somehow yeah i don't know how i thought they'd be gouging people because of the heat wave like the they were all full up but they had one room and it was like a flood with people like me who would not normally be at a four-star hotel um it was just a crazy experience because i've never you walk in and there's a concierge who gets your name and then you go up an elevator to check in so by the time you get there like oh mr ward here's your champagne and then my room took like an extra like i don't know half an hour to get ready because they were so flooded so i got complimentary room service so it was just weird like going from you know the street level where it's like i am legend out like all these homeless people (laughs) dying in the street to being like (laughs) <laughs> sitting in my like jean shorts eating salmon and watching hockey i feel like um people they have this idea that like seattle is like a war zone or something yeah, people have this really unhealthy like view of homeless people like mm-hmm. they should just like disappear into yeah. nothingness somehow yeah, like, you know like they're an aesthetic Instead problem of, like, Exactly. Yeah. Or like, oh, well, it, you're just an inconvenience to me because you're like between me and like my brunch place. Right. Like, and you should be somewhere else. But like, not not a lot of thought into where they should be constructively. You they know? don't want to have to think and yeah. have feelings about it. I saw somebody posting on Facebook about um, there was like a homeless person sleeping on the sidewalk in our town which is a small town right um and they were concerned with having to explain it to their kids and it was like yeah that classic argument (laughs) i just think that like that's a reality of the world and you should have that conversation with your kid you know yeah you had the kid you talk to it yeah (laughs) that's part of the deal (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh yeah, and it, it's it's such a layered problem too because it's not like if I uh, got kicked out of my apartment tomorrow, I wouldn't go straight to being homeless. You know what I mean? It's like generations of failure at like mental health care and mm-hmm. and the foster mm-hmm. system and and social services. It's it's like so many stratified layers of failure. Yeah, and yeah. there's not one answer that is going to solve the problem for all homeless people, right? Mm-hmm. It's like there's yeah. very specific situations that it's not just, individual people are dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just that they don't have jobs. That's yeah. that's not a one and done. Yeah. Well, and like I've heard that actually giving people a home yeah is 
a really great way to solve that problem. Like giving giving people a place that is theirs, not a shelter, like it's their own space and they can live there. They can keep their things there. It's an address um, like that is really like the baseline for like helping people with those other issues. Um, but that's people have a real problem with that. I saw this really great tweet the other day. I, I can't remember who, who said it. I can't remember how to attribute it. But it, it was a tweet that was like, government says, hey, we're going to spend $120,000 a year housing this person. And everybody's like, what are you doing? That's my tax dollars. What if we told you they had a tiny amount of marijuana in their pocket? Oh, yeah, no, spend all the money you need. Absolutely. <laughs> Is that how much it costs? To imprison people? For one person? It can be very expensive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a crazy amount of money to, to imprison somebody that we're... No, no one ever questions those expenses. But then if it's something constructive to like build somebody up, uh, then people get all upset about where their tax money is going. We've talked about this before, but it's like, I feel like there's just a baseline that people should be entitled to. Like, give every person like a tiny little house, a little, little tiny home. And if you want to work up and get like a better house, like you can absolutely do that. But it's like not taking anything away from you to like... I Let don't know. Have it's a place starting to, to live. sound like socialism. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> LA is trying to pass this thing. I don't know if the voting happened already. Uh, I'm not registered to vote here uh, yet. Um, they're trying to force hotels who have vacancies every night. Like, let's say your hotel, the deadline to book, like, if I want to book at your hotel, the deadline is 3 p.m. So every day by 3 p.m., they have to submit their vacancies and then allow homeless people to stay to to fill up their vacancies every mm -hmm. night every night basically all hotels all hotels and that's really interesting yeah there's gonna be like a line out the door at the at the fancy hotel yeah i really hope it passes because that's gonna be hilarious to watch people at the beverly hills hotel like oh, yeah i can't believe you're letting him stay here you know <laughs> <laughs> i paid six hundred dollars a night do you have to prove you're homeless to get to stay there for free I don't know. How would you? I don't know. You, yeah. You need to submit yeah, your you lack of have... bills. You got a license. I, I had not heard of that. What I had heard of was, I think they do it up here in various places, is like buying hotels, like buying the building and converting it into like low to no income housing, which I think is kind of a cool program. Yeah, that sounds... It's interesting to do that with a hotel that's still in operation and you've got <laughs> yeah. like this stratified situation in the hotel. Yeah, because you know, like those, yeah, in Beverly Hills and Bel Air and stuff, they're they're definitely going to like it's going to be degrading. They're going to be like making them go through the same like service entrance as the you know uh, immigrant employees that work in yeah. the kitchen and like so that like, okay, you can stay here, but you have to wear a bag on your head at all times. Yeah, so that the okay, guys you on can the stay here, short, but we're going to give you a shower and we're going to give you clean clothes so that you blend right in. How about that? <laughs> well, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it might actually improve the situation. Um, but yeah, how did we get here? I don't know. In full we're circle to about dreams. Hotel. You know, libertarians like dreams too, guys. <laughs> and we're just like, we're getting political. We're drawing lines in the sand, driving away our, our uh, listener base. Why has everything got to be political all the time? <laughs> Sort of uh, gracefully uh, transition out of politics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Any political dreams? <laughs> no, I did. I did have a dream the other night, but I'm afraid to talk about it because of what it might mean. So we should do your dream. <laughs> Ooh, Zach, you <laughs> okay, can't tell you us can't. things like that because we got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually it's going to turn out. It means you're just a great guy because you're scared of it, and then it's the one you're not scared of. That's yeah, like, that's right. That's true. Well, let's do Olivia's first so I can think about it. All right. I have to like close my eyes and remember this. Okay. So 
I was in like this cathedral school and it was dark. It was like a gothic ar- architecture building. It was dark in there. Um, and I'm standing in kind of like a foyer. There's like st- and stairs up the entryway and I'm standing at the top of the stairs and I look over and like I can make out the image of a statue in the dark it's a it's like a 10 foot tall statue of a woman um kind of like greek style statue and um this thing doesn't feel good it's like got dark vibes and i look over in the other direction and on the wall i see like a sigil and i see two other sigils on other parts of the wall and i look back over at the statue and it had moved closer to me and like at this point i knew that it was not just a statue and then it was kind of like going it, it, i had some like disjunctive cognition stuff where it was like kind of going between a statue and a woman who was pregnant the statue didn't seem pregnant but the woman who was also the statue was pregnant and there was this gory scene where she like she didn't give birth but like her pregnant belly was like kind of sloughed off and there was like blood and guts everywhere and at this point i'm like i don't like this i'm gonna leave this situation and so i run down the stairs and out of this dark gothic interior and it's daylight outside at some point i had sent friends to go get pizza i don't know um if that's relevant (laughs) but um i am now going to try and fly away and so i i start to fly and it's not just me i look around and there's like hundreds of other people trying to fly away from this statue and she's she's now outside with like a bow and arrow just shooting people out of the sky and then there were like several other dreams like i think i woke up from that dream um and went back to sleep and at one point i was driving down like a dark gravel road and like it was really narrow and i'm i like turn around a corner and the statue is just there in the in the middle of the road and it feels so bad it just feels like dark dark badness um and then in another dream i was fishing and like it was kind of a nice like happy dream the sun was out and like i look back behind me and up the hill i see the statue just standing at the top of the hill like watching um and yeah it was bad and then at one point um i saw so the last thing that i saw was i was at home with Victor and we were in like the the garage and I saw the three sigils again and like he was fucking with one of them and and like when he would move one the other one would move and I was like telling him not to fuck with that I also noticed one of them was like they were drawn over images and one of them was drawn over a fish an image of a fish like the Christian ichthos fish no, not quite, but um yeah. So that was um that was my dream. Uh, that aesthetically that sounds really sick, like a Neil Gaiman movie. It was kind of yeah. cool, but um yeah, it was it was definitely like scary. Like you know how like a thing that on its face would be scary doesn't have scary vibes sometimes and and then like sometimes. and then something that sometimes is just innocuous has terrifying vibes. This was a thing that was like creepy and it also just had like bad vibes the statue yes what did it look like you said greek kind of yeah like greek very tall like menacing um and it was like posed it had it like a hand up and i don't recall it like moving like i i think it only moved when i wasn't looking yeah i was gonna say when not when you're looking at it has anyone else seen doctor who no i think that's a that's a 
that's a type of monster in Doctor Who. Is I think they call them like angels or something. There's like these statues of angels that only move when you're not looking at Whoa. them, and they're like kind of they're like terrifying monsters. They're like big bad monsters in Doctor Who. Dude, that okay? It was like an angel. There was like something. That, okay, I was having a hard time like articulating this earlier because I couldn't remember its name, but it was like this was a thing and it was like a deity um and i feel like its name was like charity or something which is like <laughs> <laughs> love that like yeah a stripper. i thought that was kind of funny yeah like a stripper or like i don't know i thought it was funny that like um the idea of like charity just like shooting people out of the sky <laughs> yeah you said you felt like it was an angel Yes, I I believe that it was like an angel or some kind of deity. Yeah, because mm. that's an interesting concept, like an angel not letting humans fly. Like, huh. like what I love about this is that it's like, uh, I think we've talked about these kinds of phenomenon a couple times, but like meta horror in your dream, where it's like Olivia has this meta ability in her dream to realize she's dreaming and like go lucid enough to exit anything that's too scary for her in her dream and her brain has caught up with her where it's like it her brain processed a way to still fuck with her yeah after she like triggers this thing that's supposed to take her out of it yeah i was gonna so ask, it's like you're getting followed <clears throat> through dreams yeah i was gonna ask if that when you when you flew if it was like other times as in you were uh lucid and deciding to gtf that was the Yes, it was like, I'm going to leave this. This seems bad. Um, but the the thing was that once I started flying, I knew that there was no escaping this thing. There, I had this like, this is so spooky. I'm like remembering it as I'm talking about it. But like, I started flying and like, there were plenty of places to hide. There was a whole forest. I could move very quickly. And there were like, 200 other people being shot out of the sky but i felt targeted specifically and like there was no way that i would ever escape and so i stopped flying because it just felt futile have i talked about like how my lucid dreaming ended on this podcast <gasps> you I, have to tell this i don't think i've talked about i, don't, I can't remember it doesn't ring a have bell. you heard this zach okay i don't think so <clears throat> so when i was a kid i, I would dream all the time dream every night dream all the time um and i got really good at lucid dreaming and uh it wasn't even something that i like it's not like i knew about lucid dreaming and then tried to do it i just naturally was able to lucid dream uh and i could control my dreams really effectively and um a big part of that for me so like you you know i'm kind of an anxious person i like i shy away from from social ang like social weirdness as best as i can and so what I would have to do, I would have to prove to myself that I knew it was a dream to be able to lucid dream. So what that would look like a lot of the time is I would just like stop and announce that I knew I was in a dream, which I would never do in real life. It was like, because that would be embarrassing, right? And so if I like crossed this, th this embarrassment threshold, then my dream would like, you know, succumb to my will or whatever. I do whatever I wanted with it. Did it all the time. And then, this is very goofy sounding, but I, I was having a dream that was like a cross between a food fight and trench warfare. And oh, I do like, remember this. Yeah, and like I'm going, it's like World War One. Like there's trenches, but there's like it's like kind of cartoony because I'm a kid or whatever. There's stuff like flying around, and then it kind of like cut to I was running, and I was being chased by a mob. And at the head of the mob, and I know this is silly, uh, was Napoleon. And I was being chased by Napoleon and a bunch of like angry people I was being chased. And I, I got this awareness. I was like, okay, this is definitely a dream. Napoleon's chasing me. That's unlikely. So I stop. <laughs> and I unlikely. do my thing. And I'm like, this is a dream. And Napoleon laughs at me and keeps chasing me <clears throat> and i know that's super goofy but i was terrified by that because my trick my meta trick to control my dreams didn't work anymore and i woke up and from that 
point forward, I stopped remembering my dreams. Like I just like barely will retain dreams from that point on. But and I'll, similar experience, right? Yeah. It's like you have a technique, like a meta mm-hmm. dream control technique and something in your brain has rewired itself to be able to like get around your trick. I'm going to be real fucked up if I keep seeing statue lady in my dreams. Mm, yeah. I do not like her. Or if it's like Napoleon's you and you can't dream anymore, that'll ruin the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You're going to have to face the angel demon statue. Mm-hmm. So symbol wise, I, w- I would say statue pregnancy. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Because there was the lady who w- was but wasn't the statue. Yeah. What did the sigils look like? Like, what do you mean when you say that? They kind of looked like runes. They were pretty simple, but like, this was like demonic, honestly. It was like a fallen angel situation. And not that I really subscribed to that, but that's what it felt like. It just felt like something that once was good and holy is no longer. Yeah. It, it, it was, yeah, it was dark. And then, um, fish. Because not only I was fishing in a dream, in one dream, but the last time I saw the sigil, it was drawn over an image of a fish. Yeah, and that's why I asked if it was the Christian like fish, because that feels like you know th- this angel shooting people out of the sky. It's like a perversion of a Christian thing, an angel. Yeah, and then if a sigil was drawn over the, you know, what I mean, like yeah, this was there might be a theme of like spiritual perversion. Totally. <laughs> And you were not raised religious. I was not. No. Yeah. The fishing part of the dream, it was like we went down to this lake spot and people were fishing. And I was with my brother, I think, and Victor, I think you were there. Um, and we saw sea otters swimming out in the water. Yep. Sea otters. So this was the ocean. Um, and... Uh, nobody was having any luck fishing. Nobody around was was pulling anything in. And then my brother cast a line and immediately pulled a fish in. And then I cast a line and I also immediately pulled a fish in. And it was like, it was like a weird, it was a very ugly fish. It was like a fl- one of those flat bottom feeding fish, mm. but it was like yellow and blue splotches. And it had like a lazy eye. <laughs> <laughs> and i like turned to somebody i was like uh should i throw this one back and they were like yeah it's called a deep water derpy it was yes yeah it, it did have a name it was something like that honestly it was like a gorpy or something <laughs> and then so i threw it back and but and like i remember when i was turning around to like i was kind of just like admiring this area because it was really beautiful and like looking up the hill like that we had come down it was just at the top of the hill through the trees i saw that statue standing there and i like i pointed actually i pointed it out to you and jack i think um or the people i was with and you guys didn't see it and i was like it's right there it's right there and you're like where and like I kind of you know the thing where like you kind of have to stand from a particular place to see a thing. I like put you in that place and like was pointing like right over your shoulder so that you would look at it. And once I lined it up and like pointed and looked, it was actually it like I didn't see it anymore. There was like a woman standing there, um, who seemed not harmful or anything. Just like a person was there. Hmm. Yeah, fish has got to be a rich symbol in the Dream Bible, right? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot on fish. I, for some context, in our waking life, we just went fishing for the first time in a long time, or was that your first time ever fishing? I have, I had fished when I was a kid. Yeah, same, right? I so, think we talked about this Yeah, with the, when the little boy talked your ear off. Yeah, uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. So there's, like, there's some recent fishing experiences that might be working their way into well, your dreams. Well, yes, also, we... <laughs> we were the the newbies there on the dock. There was this old like older guy who was fishing and was like he was there way before us at like four in the morning of and course. like and he's got like his whole setup and um 
our friend who who brought us there like got us set up and we're sitting there like not knowing what we're doing and our friend who does know what he's doing is also fishing and victor and i are the only people who caught fish for the like the next three hours i don't know if anyone caught any after we left but like nobody who knew what they were doing was catching fish and we caught we caught like five or six fish that must have been so frustrating for them yeah i I think that that's how fishing works though yeah it's just like golfing you take your buddy who's never been and he just (laughs) hits under par all day yeah Mm -hmm. so statues to dream of a statue represents something in yourself or in your life that you idealize or admire you're putting yourself or another person or something in your life on a pedestal Feelings about yourself being a perfect example for others to observe. Negatively, dreaming about a statue may reflect vanity or narcissism about your physical appearance. Feelings about one's achievements being immortalized for others to observe. Feelings of emptiness that you are being observed with an unusual problem that can't be fixed. Lying to others that your life is a perfect example of functioning. Hmm. Hmm. Did any of that resonate? Um, that second to last one seemed to fit the tone of the dream as far as uh, hearing it goes. Observed with an unusual problem that can't be fixed. Yeah, mostly the feeling observed part. It's like the statue's following you and get, yeah, getting that's closer. The only thing. And then to dream of being pregnant, to dream that you or someone else is pregnant represents something new that is developing in your life. A new way of thinking, new ideas, new goals, projects, or a new life situation. Preparations, choices, or consequences are leading towards a new life situation. A period of gestation of ideas or plans. A development phase that is sensitive. Carrying within you new life that may be in the form of a book, project, or new lifestyle. A time of transition. Feelings about a new self that is about to emerge. Contemplating making a big change. Um, And then there's a pregnancy in a dream also reflects some area of your life where more of something is being increased or produced. Artists often dream of being pregnant when they're starting a new work of art. Negatively, being pregnant may reflect a new problem that is developing or a problem that is creating more problems. Watching the gestation of an event in your life that makes you jealous or scared. Feeling that a change in your life was not by choice and can't be denied. The last stream we did of yours had to do with concerns over kids. Do you think this is a parallel? Maybe. I, how you've described it, what you were telling me this morning and then how you described it just now did not seem like it resonated with like a pregnancy anxiety. But yeah, it's possible. I don't think so. Yeah. And, and also because it was... It was this angel thing that was pregnant, this statue that was pregnant, and it was in her, like, human form that she was pregnant, and then it was that she didn't give birth. She, like, Mm. her pregnant belly was, like, peeled off, and there was, it was gory, and when I went outside, there was, like, it was, like, a fucking cow exploded. There was, like, blood and guts all over the trees and the grass and all over everything. I feel like you glossed over that the first time you <laughs> so instead of so i pulled up miscarriage and stillborn because those might be where mm. we maybe make some connections so to dream of a miscarriage represents a sudden loss or end to a situation after experiencing high hopes or enthusiasm an abrupt ending immediately after believing that something you wanted was starting last minute fights arguments or cancellations after telling other people about a plan you had Alternatively, a dream of a miscarriage represents an idea or plan that did not go as expected. Setbacks, delays, or disappointments have ruined your plans. A miscarriage may also reflect situations where you feel wronged or screwed over. It may also point to a failed relationship or opportunity. It just feels weird because it wasn't me. And there's a lot of time. I will have a lot of dreams where... I'm observing something in a different dream character and it does feel like it's me or part of me, but this, mm, I've talked about this before. This is very creepy. There are certain very specific times where there is somebody in a dream that feels like detached from me. Like it's a creature that lives in the dream world. 
Yeah. They like that, they love that shit. I fucking hate that. I'm such a sucker for that. That happens to me sometimes. That's why it's usually it feels alien like a, cats. It feels like a Neil Gaiman movie. Is we should I start watching like, The Sandman. Yeah. I fucking love that. Um, Have you started watching The Sandman? No. I'm excited too. I love the graphic novel. I loved the comics in high school. I like got the the like fat books, yeah, like, the fat leather bound books, and fuck, I devoured that. Yeah, I'm, so I'm not even that. like a comic guy, but I got super into Sandman. It was very formative for me reading those comics as a teenager. It's so so good. I also love like on Twitter or whatever. There's like there's a bunch of people that are like, ah, this is this is woke PC nonsense. There's characters of color and there's like gay and trans characters in this suddenly that weren't there from the big uh, like the way that it was written in the early 90s all of that was still in there uh, yeah and here yeah. we are again in our leftist politic <laughs> alienating <laughs> well it's just funny it's one thing to be like oh they they cast a character that like uh wasn't gay in the original and like they made that character gay in this thing yeah, to fulfill like, a quota what, or whatever. that's like uh, that's a separate conversation from these people are mad that a character that was gay in the comics is or non non-binary in the comics is non-binary in the tv show it's like what are you doing yeah sorry oh no <laughs> i was just thinking you. <laughs> oh yeah i remember what i was gonna say that's yeah that is a very creepy idea that the this angel statue is something that like any of us could run into and yeah, yeah i don't i don't like how focused on me it was it and like i felt very targeted by it yeah i guess that's the other part of that dream bible entry that might maybe works is i mean what did it say like an unrelenting problem or a problem that doesn't go away hmm. i mean I, I don't know if you can relate that to something that's going on with you right now but that i mean it definitely seemed like a pretty good symbol of that the way it wouldn't leave you alone to dream of a baby being stillborn represents last minute disruptions or failures, feeling close to achieving something and losing it at the very end, experiencing a loss at a final pivotal moment, a sudden or unexpected end to something. Alternatively, a stillborn baby may reflect a sudden or last minute loss of trust in someone. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There just wasn't there wasn't a stillborn. It was like they peeled off the stomach and there was never a baby in there. Yeah, like I I can see a connection between some of these descriptions and some stuff we've been talking about mm. about waking life stuff. Yeah. Um just like uh like wedding anxiety kind mm. of stuff or like Yeah, I have I do guess I do see a little bit of that. But that's it's like last not necessarily minute, last exactly. minute stressors. Right, like last minute. It's mostly like stuff that's like coming in at the last minute and it's like I hear, oh, is this going to I hear that's pretty typical of planning a wedding. Yeah, um, but that does feel like maybe a stretch for this dream. Like, I don't know that that's what this dream is about. That's just what I'm seeing in some of these dream Bible entries. It doesn't really feel true. Yeah, yeah that's the thing is like I can I can tie that in, but it doesn't feel quite right. Yeah, if your gut's telling you that's not what because when it when it is right, you feel it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Could it be a simple because this does feel like a genre of horror movie. Could it be as simple mm -hmm. as like you watched something recently that uh, struck a like primal fear chord? I don't think so. Because or sometime, sorry, go ahead. Oh, when you got back to the, it ends with you coming back to a garage, right, where Victor is fucking with the runes or the sigils. Is that is that yes? Right? Did you feel yes. like the sigils were like protective and that him fucking with it would like? I felt like him fucking with it was going to notify it of my location. Like it was connected to the runes and like maybe yes. drawing from that, like drawing power this, from them or something. I this, felt like it would know where I was if you touched them. Could this have to do with your Ouija board experience? <laughs> it's been a while since we've messed with the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean... That you mean like something's following us, something's attached to us? Or that you're subconsciously like nervous about that... Well, I haven't thought about it. Like, well, I guess we've talked about it a little bit recently. You were just saying you wanted to sage the house because you were feeling true. creeped out in the house. Actually, I was just yeah. saying that I felt, <laughs> I felt like there was a weird energy in our house. <laughs> yeah. So maybe this is like some demonic energy from across the veil that's like creeping into your dreams. I just want to 
um, also put this out here for our listeners. I'm not like a woo woo sagey kind of person. Like I have just quite simply found that um, when there's a weird, spooky thing happening, that does seem to help a little bit. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And it, with so much of this stuff, I I always try and like leave room for. Well, maybe it's just psychological. You know, it's like a placebo. Mm. Like you're doing a thing that makes you feel better. And because you feel better, it's better, right? Um, But whatever it is, it works. So when my van got stolen and then recovered, I felt driving it around after it was recovered felt like I had this intense feeling of like violation because it was Mm -hmm. like my van. It was like my little mobile home. The van belonged to my grandma. Like it meant a lot to me. And to have somebody just like take it, it was this like intensely like gross feeling. And I saged it. And I was like, at the very, yeah. at the very least, like, I don't know about negative energy, positive, it's worth a shot if, if there is such a thing as an energy that I can clear, but at the very least, it smells nice and it's like a, a natural air freshener for the van that has had strangers in it now, you know, yeah. sweating and farting. I think like something that doesn't get talked about a lot is like the psychological damage of like being robbed or having something Mm. broken into like that's really like disturbing on an emotional level like people focus on like material loss but like it can really shake you that really fucked with you too right yeah well so when I was a kid we lived in these really bad apartments and like every like multiple times like every year our place would get broken into around a holiday and like i kept getting like like got an easter basket stolen one year i got like a like a my nintendo 64 got stolen presents oh. would get stolen it was always like our like holidays would get ruined by break-ins that happened several times when i was a kid yeah and then uh, it's super fucked up cuz like the thing yeah. that keeps me from like robbing like you for example it's not the law or it's not simply the law it's like it's also uh you know respect morals that right values it's like a social contract it's like all this my conscience is like all this stuff that they have just decided to violate you know and yeah it's like my grandmother is 80 now um and i've been out of college seven eight years and like tail into college her shop you know she's got like a shop building out in front of the house it's like a separate little building uh and got broken into and it like shook her psychology like to this day she was like she was really affected by that she like got the security system she got a gun like she's like she, it like affected her on a deep level and still does like this this anxiety about someone like violating her home like that right and it's like the stuff didn't really matter you know a Co- couple hundred dollars maybe a thousand dollars worth of stuff um but yeah you get over that psychological damage you know yeah you were yeah you recover financially but like yeah the the the, it's viscerally real when you yeah when somebody like just breaks the code like that she brings that up often like she's still she's worried about those same people who Mm -hmm. broke into that shop she's like is concerned that those people are still like maybe out to get her or like that they're going to come back or that they've well when my van they got, p- trimmed her bush without her permission oh <laughs> that was, oh this is God. a weird situation okay let me tell you the weirdest fucking thing i've ever heard super um, weird okay so we, we go over to my grandmother's place like a couple of weeks ago and she's like someone attacked my bush and i was like oh well okay that sounds a little weird <laughs> uh she like walks me over to this so she lives on she she has like lakefront property like there, there's a lake in the back there's a dock uh so you she has a back porch and you walk towards the water and to one side of the property there's like hedges right there's a bush there and that bush would like kind of grow up and over and into the water and it's like fully out of view of everybody right it's like it's not towards the front of the house it's like off in the corner towards the water the only people this this bush could possibly disturb are her immediate next door neighbors who she's like on very good terms with Mm -hmm. and like they talk all the time like they look out for her they're they're nice to her like they have a good relationship these people would talk to her if there was a problem so this bush grow up and over into the water off towards the neighbor's yard someone 
uh, in the middle of the night came out and like like killed this but like tried to like the bush. chop off as much of this bush as possible they trimmed it down to like a nothing they trimmed all of its branches yeah so she saw this and she was like oh wow some someone like was fucking with this bush d- did damage to this bush and then the next day came out and it was even more cut up someone came back two times in like an or- two times <clears throat> in an organized fashion like they were shearing it they were they were attacking they targeted this specific bush. Yeah, it was one bush. You could tell it was done it by was a like, human with a tool. Yes. A- it was like clean cut, like you would need she- like shears or garden shears or whatever. Yeah, it was like someone took shears and was just clipping off branches of this bush, like deep into the bush, like trying to kill the bush. See, and I'm over here like just stumped googling Someone trimmed my bush. <laughs> like <laughs> somebody pruned my bush without permission. <laughs> like, is yeah. this a thing? Because the only people that would be able to see it are literally in a boat on the lake, right? And they would have to be on the lake and coming in close to shore, see that bush, and think, "I want to kill that bush." Well, if I'm going to Sherlock this one, I used to have a the neighbor neighbors. that would, um, <laughs> on like cocaine binges, would like obsessively trim his hedges in the middle of the night huh. and the types of people huh. who uh you know might be partying on a lake in the middle of the night might be on they, something but they saw that bush and they were like that they might have done others they might have hit a few to prune yeah <laughs> what that sounds like the worst party <laughs> to just like pointed a bush from the lake and be like hey guys you want to go destroy that bush and it was twice they came back to hit it again they came back to to do more damage to that bush I'd be surprised how much bush. fun it is swinging a machete around when you're on pcp sure. well, i'm also like okay is this an expensive bush is somebody getting cuttings is this a super rare <laughs> bush some landscaping enthusiast spotted from the lake and was like i'm gonna come back i'm gonna take cuttings yeah, maybe it's full of copper sell wire. These bushes, mm. or um, that plant from Breaking Bad that you can use to make meth. Mm. Mm. Maybe that's what it is. I have to look up this bush. Yeah, see what see what kind of drugs you can make from this bush. So our best guess is she like the neighbor built this little apartment and started renting it out as like an Airbnb. Um, and someone that was staying there may have had it out for this bush. But why would somebody that's only going to be around for like a couple of days be like, that bush is in my way <laughs> and like maul a bush like drugs, man. Drugs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, I was trying so hard not to keep laughing at attack my bush. Yeah. That <laughs> mm-hmm. It came out as like one single tear. I don't know if you saw that. It's like roll, <laughs> rolling down my face. So did... Olivia, it looked like you were um, looking over Victor's shoulder at the Dream Bible. Were you trying to land the plane oh, on this angel dream? Yeah. Are we talking about dreams? Is this a dream <laughs> podcast? Is this a dream podcast? Are we dreaming right now? Um, I looked up angels, demons, and following. Mm. See, here's the thing. There is an, the, in the entry for angels, there's no negative, which makes me feel like that's not going to give us. What about demon? Yeah, I think demon's more accurate here. Even though it didn't look like, you know, your stereotypical, like, cloven hooved. It felt demonic. Okay. I, and I think... Well, that's... Yeah, that's important I also part. maybe felt like it was maybe, like, a witch or something. Like, mm. I remember looking at the sigils and thinking that that was some witchcraft thing. Yeah. When I asked mm. you if maybe this was influenced by a movie, I was thinking of the witch. Which witch is witch? They use the word bitch a lot in this witch entry. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the witch entry. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. To dream of a witch represents feelings about others enjoying and intentionally making efforts to keep you unhappy. Feeling that someone is an expert at keeping you unhappy, failing, or turning people against you. Feeling cursed by bad luck or the victim of manipulation. Feelings about someone else's manipulative interference as being evil. A person in your life that you feel is obsessed with making sure you never like yourself. Feelings about a woman in your life being an evil bitch. 
<laughs> is it just because it rhymes? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, did they put that dream? in quotes? They did. Okay. They did. Sounds like they're maybe did quoting dream? somebody from the surveys that they took. Yeah, they're like every every dream interpretation they got for which they were like they just keep calling these people bitches like i don't know (laughs) write it down i guess i don't uh to dream about being a witch may reflect your own attempts to intentionally try to manipulate others trying to turn others against each other working hard to make someone you don't like fail awareness of yourself being arrogant deceptive or manipulative to sabotage someone jealousy interfering with someone else's happiness awareness of yourself being a terrible bitch well i wasn't i wasn't the terrible bitch in the in the dream but you know i am so feelings about a dangerous selfish or heartless woman frustrations with your mother or your mother-in-law a cranky woman in your life children may dream of witches to reflect fear of the mother being angry or punishing them and then there's something about a male witch or warlock but that doesn't feel relevant here Mm -hmm. very feminine yeah uh, girl boss vibes from mm-hmm. this entity. She was she was badass, but like <laughs> fucking scary. Yeah, picturing her with like a bow and arrow, this like nine foot tall stone woman shooting like flying people out of the yeah, sky like, with a bow and arrow. It was awesome. fucking badass. Yeah, that's metal. Uh, and I I'm like flying away, and I just think, nope, there's no escape. <laughs> <laughs> I land. <laughs> There was also, oh, I'm remembering now, when I landed from that flying episode, um, it was like I landed at a fucked up birthday party that was happening in, like, in front of the building where, like, all of the blood and guts were, and there was, like, oh, God, oh, fuck, okay, this is almost too much to get into. It was fucking no, weird. A, we don't, we, we're doing a one dream episode. <sighs> okay, so I land at this, like, birthday party, and there's like cake and stuff and then there's like this whole thing where like there i'm seeing somebody talking to the statue but they they're trying to like trick it by they had like a face over their face like it was really creepy they the have, people do the per- there was a person trying to talk to the statue but they wouldn't look at it and so they had like a face like a mask kind yeah yeah i guess it was like a mask of a face of it was like a mask of her own face like the joker in that one comic book wait okay let's let's deconstruct this a little bit so the mask was of the witch's face no it was like it was a woman a blonde woman talking to the witch okay or talking to the statue and she was sitting in a chair and she had a mask of her own face over her face. Gotcha. And I think uh, like at this, for some reason in this moment, the statue was just a bust. Mm. And I was like positioning the statue to like face this woman. Whoa. And um, I remember like bringing it too close. And I was like, oh, I should back off because if you get this close, you can really see that that's a mask and not her actual face. Huh. And there was some like birthday party, like there was cake. There was really pretty cake. There was a cake that was like in the shape of a bunny. And um, there was, there were like multiple cakes. And I, I think I tasted the cake and, um, I remember thinking it's dry just the way I like it. (laughs) (laughs) So it sounds like you, maybe because you did, you knew you couldn't just fly away. You were trying to deceive the statue by positioning it towards like a a dummy or somebody playing. It sounds like somebody was playing the part of you by wearing a blonde woman mask. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That kind of feels right. Uh, There was also some, like there was a very taunting vibe to the whole thing like you were taunting the bust like tricking it Mm. trying to trick it but there was like um there was some sassiness going on i don't remember Mm. what the conversation was but like the the person in the mask was like confronting it wouldn't be the first time that cake in your dreams was like a fuck yeah you. cake and baked goods are no good in my dream yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're sassy right they're like wrap this is yeah, yeah they're yeah. fuck yous 
Yeah, cake is a kind cake of is a, a fuck, fuck you, you in my tree. You. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's so funny. Do, what kind of connection did you feel to the woman wearing the mask? Did she feel like a, an I, aspect of you? Yeah. Uh huh. It sounds like so. I agree with Zach that it sounds like you did your trick, your your um your meta trick, your your um fly away. Uh, yeah, you're flying away, and it didn't work. And then this landing and this um this like kind of uh new path your dream took was mm -hmm. like you trying to work out a new way yeah. to resolve this problem. That felt feels correct. There's another layer to that too with the birthday cake because it feels like the demon or witch or whatever tried to deceive you with a fake pregnancy, and so mm -hmm. you're trying to like call the bluff and you're throwing a fake birthday party with deliciously dry fuck you cake. <laughs> I'm also remembering the the thing I noticed the most about the mask was that the eyes were big and very very blue which I have green eyes but I remember noticing that um hmm. I just keep humming into the hmm. microphone because it is an intriguing dream hmm hmm hmm, hmm. 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 This is an ASMR podcast. Yeah. Um, a little vocal, vocal fry. I have so many Dream Bible tabs open now. Um, where should we? Okay, so I've got eyes. <laughs> birthday. I'm sorry, guys. Birthday See, this is cake. what I mean. I just get these like epic like sagas. And I don't and know what to do with them. Letting you go on and on so that I'm off the hook for my dream that I don't want to talk about. Yeah, We're you can keep that buried. Yeah. Okay. Eyes. Birthday birthday cake uh rabbits mask bow and arrow following demons and then angels like we, we weren't feeling <laughs> yes, yeah Demise. eyes birthday birthday, birthday cake, cake. rabbits <laughs> demons following bow and arrow um all right so to dream of eyes in a dream represent <laughs> to dream of eyes in a dream <laughs> as opposed to to dream of an eye somewhere else uh represents observation judgments and consciousness the way you or some aspect of your personality sees a situation so that leans into this meta concept we're talking about of like you tried your you you tried your um ah gosh what lucid dreaming you tried to lucid dream it failed and then you landed in this like Kind of like you're in your own subconscious trying to work through this this problem. Mm -hmm. Blue eyes symbolize positivity, a positive outlook on a situation or good intentions, a reflection of positive thinking patterns or good choices. You or some aspect of your personality is confident, sympathetic, constructive, or honest thinking patterns or areas of your life that are helpful. Yeah, that feels right. Like while the mask was kind of creepy, it was it did feel like a force for good and it did feel like it was going it was using the mask against Right, and it was a decoy, right? Cuz you didn't want to get the bus too close lest it figure out what you're right. doing. And it also felt like um this is interesting. It felt like the person under the mask needed to wear the mask to like the mask was what would keep them safe from the statue so like if her actual face was shown or if she actually looked at the statue it would be dangerous so have have you been are you able to like bring this to the real world yet like is is there somebody currently who's like aggressively coming at you and and uh trying to and you're trying to like redirect their energy you know what i mean like you're trying to manipulate a manipulator to like quell a situation without blowing it up <laughs> is that super specific thing happening right now and you're like <laughs> i mean yes next question <laughs> <laughs> um it reminded me of that i think you should leave sketch this has ever happened to you so now you got a tiny hole in your toilet that's just for farts <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, so that blue eyes positivity thing it's like you being scared of something and then you're trying to put your best foot forward or like confront this thing with like your strongest self but it's like 
um it's a mask it's like a shadow of a shadow of you and like you're over there like behind the thing trying like the real you is like out of sight while you've got like layers of like protective performance but uh, like that you're trying to distract this thing with to to like meet it where it is you know to like scare it off you're doing the thing where like a bear comes out of the woods and you put your arms up and you go ah it feels like you're trying to you're trying to scare the thing back or like intimidate this beast that's like wandered into your campsite yeah or at least re- redirect its uh war path right yeah so did this feel negative in this space it felt kind of like the mad hatter party mm. <laughs> it felt like chaotic and like a, a little twisted but like not dark exactly to dream of a birthday represents a special occasion that feels lucky or all about you <laughs> feeling that others need to respect you as the most special or lucky for a special occasion an occasion all to yourself or someone that you feel is deserving of special treatment special treatment that feels like you need to give it to others or that it needs to be given to you a time where you or some aspect of yourself is experiencing the realization of wishes or desires, feeling special or lucky. A time where you feel lucky or successful. Plans or preparations you are making to treat someone else special. Feeling about yourself or your existence being celebrated. To dream of someone else having a birthday represents some aspect of your personality feeling lucky or getting what it wants. Did it feel like your birthday? Um, no, I don't no. know. Okay. And then negatively, dreaming about a birthday may reflect jealousy of other people enjoying special treatment or being liked by a lot of people easily. Feelings about a rare, unpleasant occasion for others that is very lucky to you, such as the death of a rich relative (laughs) that brings you an inheritance. Jeez. Excessive need for special treatment all the time. Non-objective views about special treatment lasting forever. Okay. Yeah, did you have a sense of whose birthday it was? Because I just assumed it was no one's birthday and that the whole thing was a ploy. It that's what it felt more like. It didn't. It felt like it was a setup. Yeah, it was like it was for the statue. Yeah, it was the statue. It was party. <laughs> but it still represents something. Yeah. Right. Um. Okay. So then, to dream of birthday cake represents a special occasion that makes you feel lucky or special, a special occasion that is shared with others. Something good has happened that is just for you. You may be getting exactly what you wanted. A wish may have been realized. Uh, then, okay, so let's just okay, wait, scroll through here. Wait, that seems, there was blood and guts all over the place. At the birthday party? Yes. It was uh, a bloody birthday party? Well, it was right in front of the place where the like where the the pregnancy okay. exploded yeah, you, and oh. so there was blood and guts on the ground. You did whoa, whoa. you did you did say that it was took place in the same locale, but for some reason I, I had imagined it was cleaned up by now. Not really. I thought they exploded. But it wasn't dark. <laughs> I, I thought that was inside. It was, the- but it was so forceful that it was like blown out like so when I ran down the stairs and outside there was like guts in the trees and on the ground everywhere. Oh wow, okay. It so was like a like, cow exploded like, outside. You're like, oh the birthday party is quirky like Alice in Wonderland. But you know, yeah, just it was like, like entrails that. hanging from a tree. <laughs> yeah. So that there wasn't-, wasn't necessarily blood on the cake, but there was See, I'm just saying that's oh. interesting because there's one of these hyper specific dream Bible entries. Yes. So if you see a birthday cake with blood on it, that may reflect a negative situation that overshadows your good luck or special occasion. It may also represent guilt you have with something negative you did to achieve your good fortune. Something bad has happened to overshadow or ruin socializing about a special occasion. A loss of some kind ruining a special occasion. I feel like we're getting somewhere. Mm. All right, stop the recording. Turn the <laughs> podcast off. <laughs> we're done. We're done here. Please stand by. The Young and the Restless will return shortly. Whenever we have to stop recording and come back with with a disclaimer, I grab a beer. So. <laughs> So yes. we're back with beer and uh, this little uh, blip in the recording that you hear. That's because we touched on a thing uh, that is maybe a little too sensitive to put out in the world. So 
we're going to talk around the thing that we did hit on with the birthday party. And I think that that is one thing that this dream is about, but maybe not the whole thing. Does that feel right? It does. So the birthday party, the the cake and the mask and the the statue, are those all tied together, would you say? That whole situation is about one particular concern that I have uh, going on in my life right now. Um, but it doesn't feel like the whole dream to me. But it is a through line. Like it keeps following you to other dreams. I don't think that the statue is this th- is about oh. this thing. I think the statue is a part of that thing. The statue is a deeper thing. That's kind of what I'm thinking is like maybe the bloody birthday party is one place in which whatever the statue represents is present. Yeah. Or as we've established, Um, the statue is a real entity that anybody can run into in the dream world. And that's worse. I'm open to that, (laughs) honestly. Like, that sounds possible. I prefer it to not be, but... um, (laughs) All Doctor Who villains exist in the dream sphere (laughs) and can come for you at any time. Just them, though. Just specifically canon Doctor Who villains. What are they called? That was actually... Uh, a, angels. That was actually a non-fiction or show. Maybe, maybe Weeping Angels or something like that? Doctor Who Angels. Yeah. Is it like spot on your experience? Oh, my fuck. We'll watch some Doctor Who because like that's one of... that's. There's a couple of genuinely scary things in Doctor Who and that's one of them. Uh, Did it look... Is it? Does it look like it? Yeah. And now I have to Google it. Um, there, I don't remember there being wings necessarily, but there but the, honestly the might have been. And the the vibe is this. I picture so the whole premise is they're statues, but they're like terrifying monsters. That's it. But they can only move when you're not looking at them. They I'm gonna can move fast and creepily, and will try and kill you when you're not looking at them. But if you look at them, they freeze like statues. Uh, Zach, I'm gonna send you a picture that feels like spot on. Oh, that's and then crazy. um listeners i'm gonna maybe put this on the instagram when this episode comes out because whew, spooky and you've never really watched doctor who have you no yeah so this isn't like a thing that's in the back of your brain and you had a dream about doctor it's like um yeah yeah that, that's kind of what i pictured when you said greek statue yeah that's that is- um absolutely spot on To dream of being followed by a creepy stranger may reflect feelings of anxiety or suspicion about negativity from your past resurfacing. It may also reflect feelings of anxiety about a mysterious situation or problem not going away. Yes, we figured out one thing that could be that we're not talking about, but... I mean, okay, what that brings up for me is, like... We all have our shit, right? We've all got like our patterns and I'm I'm perfect. There are patterns to your problems. There are rhythms to your weakness. Hey, 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 hey. Trademark. (laughs) Those are all right. Anyway. Yeah. Listen to Victor's music. But uh yeah, so like negativity from your past resurfacing feelings of anxiety about a mysterious situation or problem not going away. Like it kind of just feels like it's alluding to a thing that has interfered with my relationships in the past like a thing in me that i need to work on um that has caused issues in my friendships and or relationships so not not to get too personal but we had a conversation about this yesterday yeah we had a whole conversation about like how there was maybe through lines mm-hmm. in olivia we and olivia's getting into it yes yeah and uh, to tie it in so like in certain relationships, I have been like conflict avoidant. It's interesting because like in our relationship, we like we are so communicative that there's no conflict to avoid. Like we're any conflict that could eventually come up for us well, is like and communicative is sort of the antonym of avoidant. Right. Right. So. Yeah. That's a good way to think about that. And I think like that has Like, I mean, that's why we're getting married. Like, uh, we just, we communicate really well. Yeah. And um, I feel like we nip anything in the bud before it ever has a chance to, like, turn into a problem. That is not necessarily always the case in other relationships with me. And, like, and it might be that I, like, I meet people where they're at. Like, 
you brought a lot of communication into our relationship. And like, I am really communicative with my friends. Um, but like, there have definitely been situations where there has been a problem that has emerged or that I've become aware of. And I avoid discussing it with people. So yeah, that's where I'm, I am currently avoiding discussing the birthday party thing with the people involved in the birthday party situation. Um, and for me, it's felt like, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, uh, and also like the, the wedding is coming up and I don't want to like make anything weird or bring like weird energy to our wedding. Mm hmm. Not to therapize you, but can I ask you, like, what, growing up in your household, what kind of um, style of, of handling conflicts was us utilized? So I was just having a conversation with a friend the other day. Uh, I mean, it seems obvious, but, like, how much that affects how we deal with conflict now. Yeah. Because I grew up in a very kind of avoidant household. It was, we didn't really talk mm -hmm. about feelings much. and. We, no one ever yelled. There was a, if if there was a problem, there was like kind of passive aggression and martyrism, mm -hmm. martyrdom, whatever you want to call it, uh, kind of catty comments, stuff stuff like that. Um, and so for me now, that kind of passive aggression like really activates me and really gets under my skin. Whereas if somebody yells at me, I'm just like, whatever, dude. Like that, that you're just being a baby. But my friend yeah. grew up in a household with lots of yelling, and so she gets yelled at gets under her skin she gets very activated and if somebody's right. if somebody's passive aggressive with her she just sort of like brushes it off and i'm the opposite because i grew up the opposite this is a, so i'm just curious what, what, what your childhood was like i think like hmm, that's an interesting question I do, I do think that like with one of my parents like there was I feel like that was not an issue. There was really not a lot of actually I feel like one of my parents was like pass more passive, you know, and like or or just isn't really bothered by a lot of things, you know. Um is a, a really positive person and so like uh maybe that's like where like a like a passivity kind of thing comes from. And then with my other parents, their reaction was like unpredictable and like it maybe didn't matter if like I had a valid point to bring up. Like uh, I was not always going to be met with like um, and like an emotionally intelligent discussion about it or like understanding of my feelings. Like I do feel like my feelings were really dismissed a lot of the time. And I was like told that I was being like overly emotional um, if I ever had feelings about a thing that was like inconvenient for this parent. So like, that does make sense that I would avoid like confronting people. Yeah, because if I feel like it might get me in trouble. Yeah, or minimized, or that the reaction would be unpredictable. Because that's there's something very scary about unpredictability. Like maybe even more so than knowing you're going to get yelled at. Yeah, or that it would damage the relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. So this fear that expressing your needs or um, you know, enforcing your boundaries is just going to damage the relationship. There's nothing to be gained. Only things to be lost. You know, yeah, which that, you know, that translates both to like trying to simply fly away from the statue and then yeah. and then to trying to trick it, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. both both are styles of one is just literal flight and the other is like um, casual deception, but neither are like confronting it. So if we think about the statue as this, that part of me for right. a second, like, how does that track? say the statue is this like dysfunctional part of my psychology that is like following me or it could be like because like we we said in the past sometimes dreams are like like how victor put it like a, running a simulation right. um it could represent like your fear of like maybe it's not a situation that's actually happening right now but uh the fear of a situation that you will have to confront because it's so relentless and it's not going to go away unless you do I felt like I had kind of like a like a shifted perspective when when um we were talking about avoidance a little bit about the the mask mm. where okay so you try and fly away right and that doesn't work and then you have like this kind of perfect metaphor uh uh for like like putting on a brave face or acting like you're fine of like you've got a shadow of a shadow of yourself 
with these bright blue eyes <laughs> of positivity, right? That's like confronting this thing that you can't deal with the way you want to. And it like it can't get too close or it might see that that's a fake side of you that you're putting on something uh -huh. that is like, I'm happy. I'm positive. Things are good. We're cool. And it, okay. And now that you're saying that, the reason why, so I told you I moved, I moved the bust of the statue closer to it. And then I was like, oh, well, no, that's too close. I moved it back. When I moved it too close, I saw her freaking out under the mask. <laughs> she was like freaked out. She was like, no, 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 that's too close. Well, you're literally, you're keeping enough distance yeah. between yourself and the problem so that it can't see that you're putting on like this positive, happy face for it. Right. Okay. Um, did we pull up fish already? Fishy. Because one... The first time the statue came back, you were fishing, right? Yeah. Was that the first or second time? Um, That was the third time. <laughs> but it, it felt like an, a new dream, right? Like a separate yeah, dream that the angel like... came back to? So I've got fishing and fish. Um, Cause, yeah, there's so some... I'll read fishing first. Okay. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Oh, what fishing. Were you gonna say? <laughs> I was just going to say there's some interesting stuff in, in fish, that, especially in the context of like it being interrupted by a unrelenting problem. Yeah. So, uh, to wow. <laughs> does this feel insightful? You're already yeah. skimming it. Yeah. To dream of fishing represents a wish to find new ideas or gain insights into problems. It may also reflect your search for a solution to an uncertain situation. Feeling that something is wrong in your life, an open mind about solving a problem. Okay. Um, yes, that all makes sense. Skip and then ahead. here. To catch a fish symbolizes gaining insight as you pull it from the un unconscious into your conscious mind, discovering ideas. And in this dream, I catch a fish. It's really ugly. And I throw it back <laughs> into the unconscious. <laughs> That's right. And then, and then that... I look up and I see the fucking statue the watching thing. me. Ooh, oh, damn. I kind of feel like. I don't know. I feel like since, like we had kind of a deep conversation yesterday. Yeah. And it's like maybe that unearthed something in you that you, you maybe don't um, engage with very often. And that might have leaked into this dream. Yeah. Do you, does that feel? Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. I, I caught the insight. I looked at it. I didn't like it. Like, and nah, I put it back it into back. the unconscious. Yeah. Don't we all do that all the time? All right. I'll, I'm going to catch the fish again. I'm going to take a a good look at it and I'm gonna keep it as a pet, there I guess. Go. Sounds so, like if you don't, the angel's just the weeping angel's just gonna keep following you. Fuck fuck that. It looks like fish leans right into this interpretation. To dream of fish represents unconscious thoughts or unconscious truths. Things you may notice about yourself or your life but don't fully understand. Being aware of something you can't fully grasp, a subtle awareness. Positively, fish may reflect valuable insights, learning new things about yourself or that were previously difficult to grasp. Negatively, fish reflects emotional problems or negative emotions that you notice yourself have but are refusing to take serious. You may be aware that you have a problem but don't understand the underlying issues that created it, mm. insights that elude you. It may also reflect problems that are out in the open but nobody wants to talk about. People undergoing therapy or powerful personal growth often dream of fish swimming below the surface of the water to symbolize new insights about themselves that they're trying to discover. I saw a fish swimming I, when I was fishing in the dream. Yeah. I, saw, I saw one swimming in the water. To dream of catching a fish symbolizes gaining insight or new understanding, learning something about yourself or how a difficult problem works. Let's see, there's dead fish. There's fish size. It really breaks Blue it down fish. by color too. There's like every color. Do you remember what color it was? Yeah. Um, my fish, my brother's fish was like a normal silver looking fish. Yeah. My fish was like the color of your shirt, Zach. It was like banana yellow, yellow, and it had like splotches of like white and light blue. Yellow fish reflects subtle awareness with issues that you notice keep <laughs> manifesting in your waking life. Something you can't help but notice. Bluefish are positive thoughts. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Was there all... anything about an, an ugly? F I mean, actually, I, I think I know why it's ugly. It was ugly because I didn't. You didn't like it. I didn't want. I yeah, don't like don't, it. You don't like this particular truth. It. Yeah. You don't want to confront the thing. It's easier to put it back in the water. Yeah, and I think I keep telling myself like, 
it's those, one of those things, you know, when you're in a relationship that's not working and you're like, yeah, I got to break up with them. But like now is not really a good time. Oh, yeah. And two <laughs> years later, Paul's you're like, eh, I've been thinking this for a long time. Yeah, and eventually think, the lease will be up and uh, we'll cross that yeah, bridge. And we can yeah. Do, yeah. You know, maybe they'll die. I don't know. Maybe, we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll radically change who they are. <laughs> that's the worst one. Don't that's ever think one. that. That's the trick. Yeah. Um. Maybe I'll yeah. grow into them. <laughs> oh, wow. That's okay. dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think particularly right now, um, it feels like, oh, there's so much going on with the wedding and like, uh, uh, like, and how this particular thing is manifesting in an, it, it is like going to affect my ability to like fully be present at our wedding, I think. And I think, that that's what you're worried just about. like yeah yeah like you know i i don't know it it is kind of important that um this is addressed the way that it's coming up right now i think i need to address it before the wedding so you ta- that we you, can- now you're talking about the thing we're not talking about yes i think it's not an acceptable outcome for the wedding to be overshadowed by some problem like that i don't know? think i would i don't think i'm worried about that as much like I would not let anything overshadow our wedding. It's just that I want, um, obviously all the people we care about are going to be at our wedding. Mm-hmm. And like, there's a a thing that I want to discuss with somebody who's important to me before the wedding so that I don't feel like that is in the air between me and that person during this like really special time where I want all of the people who I love to be around us and there to be just you know love and positivity that's what it's about it's not that it would overshadow the wedding it's just that like i want to be like in a really good place with all of our closest people yeah and i think this dream may symbolize a part of yourself that's that's feeling aware that this is not just about this one situation yeah there's a bigger pattern that you maybe need to start thinking about and trying to break yeah involving like avoidance yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think that's right wow and you tried to fly away from it and it it your dream pursued you it was like no this is important you can't check out of yeah. this yeah. which is something else just shoot me down with a bow and arrow yeah. yeah especially in reference to or talking about patterns that's literally a thing you do in your dreams all the time yeah fuck this i'm out and just fly away yeah yeah Wow, we, we cracked it. We got there. Yeah, I was worried. I didn't think we were going to get there. Yeah, this is a big one. That would be yeah. frustrating if we <laughs> yeah, spent this much would, time on such a complicated dream like, and we're just like all shoulders. Mm-hmm. Hypnagogic blue balls. That's a term that I just came up. <laughs> That's with. the title of the episode. <laughs> How weird is it though that you had like a. A, a dream that perfectly channeled a Doctor Who monster. Yeah, that's weird. It's a very interesting dream. Yeah. Well, now I know what that statue means. I'll look out for it. Yeah. Yeah, I've got some personal work to do. So. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I don't. Yeah. That's why I'm perfect. <laughs> that's why I don't dream. Perfect. Yeah, nothing to work on. He is perfect. Right. Oh yeah. What was the um, angel entry? I thought we looked at it and it didn't strike a chord with you. An angel may also represent a partner, fiance, or a spouse that you see as being perfect. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> that's angel positively, though. Mm, mm-hmm. There's no angel negative. Oh, that's why it didn't work. Yeah. Right. For this dream. Oh, the, the, the demon. Shit. The ending where you come home and your protective runes, Victor's. Messi- like he's trying to get you to be less avoidant he's addressing yeah, the problem yeah that was our yeah so we had this conversation that was representative of me messing with you your fucking with my with your psychological barriers <laughs> he's, preventing you from dealing with this yeah thing. he's not like tipping him over either he's just like kind of he like, was like moving play, one yeah. and then there was one on the opposite wall and anytime he moved this one the other one would move with it yeah, and so I was like, he was just like, let's see what happens if we move this over here. And they're like, no, don't. I've been working on that for years. It keeps the demons away. <laughs> don't touch that. <laughs> that's wow. The, that's the fabric of my subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to rip it. <laughs> yeah.
Thank you for listening to The Young and the Restless. You can follow us on Instagram at The Young and the Restless Pod and submit your dreams for interpretation to The Young and the Restless Pod at Gmail. And as we always say, you, you can, can shoot, shoot a fish in a barrel, barrel but, but you, you can't, can't make, make them, them drink. drink. Didn't see you there. Hey, since you're still here, how about you dip on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review? And by the way, put 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 a dream in the description, and we'll read one each week on the show. Thanks.